Dr. Ryan's nurse mother sits at our table. Oh, okay. Well, that's wonderful. That's how I know that his nurse is this woman's daughter. Oh, my. Okay. Well, this is Christy Thorpe with the Saline County Historical Society. I am here today interviewing Florence Turner. She's 101 years old and has lived part of her life in Saline County. This interview is with her permission and is the property of Saline County Historical Society. So, Ms. Turner, who are you the daughter of? Daughter of. Or I incur a hanine. Oh, that's an interesting name. Did you have any brothers or sisters? I had two brothers. Okay, and what were their names? Harold and Joel uh, Fred. Okay. And you told me already you've had eight children. Yeah. My land. What are their names? Well, that's this is a picture over there. Okay. I can get that picture and, and I can point out each thing. Sure. Oh, okay. We'll take a look at that and just see see all the children. Now, were the children raised outside of Saline County? Yes. <laughs> no. Yes. What was that kind of? We, we were County. raised in Pettis County. Okay. We went to school at Smithton. Right here in Virginia. Okay, I've got you. I'll, I'll point out them as they will clip those one. Okay. This is the oldest one. Okay. That's Virginia. Mary was next. All right. That's her right there. All right. <laughs> and the next one was a boy, was uh, Michael. And uh, Juanita was next, that's the boy. And uh, Nova was uh, She was next, Nova. And uh, let's see. That's uh, Cheryl. This is Cheryl. And then there was uh, Marvin. Marvin? Next one. Okay. Ten years difference between the two. Wow. And this, uh, and Susanna. this is Susanna. She's oh, the baby. She's the youngest one. She's the youngest. And how old is she right now? I don't know exactly how old she is. Do you know how old Susanna is? She'd be about 62. 62. Okay. Something like that. She's almost 30. I'm 73. I'm 76. She's okay. <laughs> I don't feel like the whole thing. Well, thank you for showing this picture here. Let me make sure we swing. All right. Thank you so much. So, you lived most of your life in Pettis County, is that correct? Well, I grew up in Nottoway County. That's the Murray uh, We We moved from Iowa. We lived in Iowa for a while. Okay. Iowa, then we went to uh, Stadia in 1954. Okay. And so, when did you come to Saline County? Didn't you say it was about 20 years ago? Yeah, about 22 years ago. Oh, and Dad died. About 50 years ago. Dad died in a year to, uh, 20 20 years ago. I moved up here. Okay. How many? 20 years ago? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that's when I was not going to run. Because Dad died in the year I, 2000. I and fell. And my arm hit up. And I moved up by my oldest daughter's place. And they took me to the doctor, which was Dr. Ryan. And he doctored this up. And I've been with Dr. Ryan ever since. Wow. Over him. Wow. So it's been 20 years I've with Dr. Ryan. And so you lived on property out at the Marshall Junction for a bit? At, at yeah. The, okay. And then at some point you moved here to Golden Oaks about a I year was ago? Here about, no, about two months ago. Okay. And last August you no, moved No, I moved up to the Virginians 
You moved here last August, Mom. How long has that been? It's been a year. It's been a year. Because last August is when you got sick and went to the hospital, and Dr. Ryan put you out here in August of last year. We lived down there in Sevilla when he died. And I lived there a year. And then I moved up, I sold the farm. I got her to move up there. I by my daughter. Okay. Now tell me, so have you been a farmer all your life? Yeah, I've been a And what type of farming did you do? Oh, we had cattle. And we had the grain. Okay. And so yeah. what? At one time we did in Iowa for about three years. <laughs> Six hundred acres. We had hogs farm. too. And that was hay and and we had cattle up there. And they sold that place for we were seven. And then we moved down here to we bought a place four miles north east of today. And we lived there eight years. Well, we moved, and uh, then he, he worked for Howard's Construction Company. Oh my, so on top of farming, yeah. he did construction. Yeah. My land. The last place we lived at, we started out with a high rate we bought, and he got a job at Howard's. And the kids pretty much did the farming. I did Everybody the farming. Everybody had a job. <laughs> no one. Huh? Well, did everybody had a job? Yeah, we all had chores to do. I'll betcha. Whether it was feeding animals or harvesting the garden or working the crops, I bet it was something. Gathering the eggs. Oh, what type of equipment did you use in farming? What it takes. We had a 1954 tractor. Super MTA farm all that we used. Is that a tractor? A tractor. Farm. Okay. Oh, yeah. I had two of them. We had two tractors. And then you had that uh, 4020 John Deere tractor. And uh, Baylor. Right? The kids pretty much did the farming. Yeah, we mm -hmm. yep. did the farming. Because a lot of times, Howard's job was working there, and he was gone a lot of times a whole week. Oh my! I remember one time Susanna said, I asked, "Who's that man that comes every weekend and sleeps with you?" Yeah. He said, I, asked, he asked. <laughs> I remember that. Dad would come home on the weekends, and Susanna was the baby. Uh huh. And she was tiny, and she. And Dad being gone all the time, she went up to Mom, pulled her dress, and said, Mom, who's that man? He's back again. I said, that's your father. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't understand. She was real shy. And she didn't understand that Dad had to work away from home. Mm -hmm. So with, with all this history from, you know, other places you lived, you brought all that knowledge and memories to this county. Mm -hmm wouldn't you say? Because now you're able to recall those things. So what did you do late in life uh, when you moved to the Marshall Junction? What did I do? Yeah, were you retired at that point from oh, farming? Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, you sold the farm. we farmed, and my husband worked for hours, and when he died, then I moved up to have about my hours with daughter. And so what did you guys do during the day when you moved up with your daughter? Uh, gardening. Well, she had a big garden. We worked her garden. Oh, club meetings. We had a club that we wanted to. What type of, was it a women's club? Or? Yeah. Well, what type of things do they talk about in those clubs? Well, how to better your life in the home, just things that you do in a home. Okay. 
And how often did you go to those meetings? Once a month. Okay. Did you get to compare recipes? Oh, yeah. Oh, my. Yeah. What was the best thing you ever baked? Huh. What was the best thing we ever baked? Cherry pie. Oh. <laughs> she asked me one time what I wanted for my birthday, what kind of cake I wanted, and I told her I didn't want a cake, I want a cherry pie, and it was fresh cherries off the mm -hmm. tree. That's the best yeah, cherry pie. Yeah. She makes the best cherry yeah, pie. Nice big cherry tree. <laughs> wow, at your home did you have a cherry tree? Yeah. Yeah. Man. And about right now is when the cherries are ready to pick, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Getting that time. Yeah. Good land. How many cherry pies could you get off your tree? <laughs> Oh, I don't know. Quite a few. How many cherry pies did I make? Well, I don't know, Mom, but we canned a lot of it and had later on yeah. in the winter time when we when uh, had made pies and everything, so she canned a lot of the cherries. Mm-hmm. Froze them. Had yeah, a big old farmhouse we lived in. The cherries were ripe. Yeah. We yeah, lived, we lived in a big old two-story farmhouse. So, that sounds pretty good to me. What's your your best dish that you make outside of baking a cherry pie? Uh, what kind of candy did you make? We made divinity. Ooh. Oh yeah. We made peanut brittle. Huh? We made peanut brittle. Oh yeah, we made that. That's good. Made chocolate candy. Mm. Yeah. Did you make this candy year round, or was it just certain seasons you did this? Never wanted. It. <laughs> that sounds good. Yeah. So, what would you say is the thing you're most proudest of? That you've done. That I've done? Yeah. Mm. Raise, raise eight kids. <laughs> what was the most thing you was proud of, Mom? Yeah, what did that do? Raising eight kids. Huh? To raise eight kids? Yeah, I guess you could say that. <laughs> I remember one time, well, uh, Stanley Dicely uh, turned my uncle in, claimed that he unscrewed the screws on the seat because the seat was fall. Well, somebody saw Stanley unscrewing them and turning it in. So uh, uh, they reported it to the principal, and the next morning, I beat the bus to school, and as I was coming down the road, I had to cross that bus And I didn't stop. Now, I seen the bus coming. I didn't stop for the road. I just kept going. And one of the kids said, well, that's your mother? And uh, some of Mark or something said, yeah, and said, well, she must be in a hurry. And he said, Mom's always in a hurry. I got to the schoolhouse before the bus did and told the principal what this kid had said that Stan and Dashley had wanted him to the through, not my son. And I was in the principal's office when the bus got to school and turned Stan me in. Well, there you go. So it sounds to me like you were a strong mother. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And looked out for your babies real well. Mm -hmm. Did I have to go to the principal for you? <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell everything, Mom. <laughs> well, goodness. Now, um, so in, in your family heritage... Are there famous people in your family that you're aware of? Just good, hard-working Americans. 
Has your family always done farming that you know of? Yeah. Her, her dad did big farming. Have you? Her boss obituaries over there. Huh? Her boss obituaries over there. Well, no, she don't want that. Is that, Is that your daughter? That's her daughter in law. Oh, sister in law. Sister in law, Irma, she just she died. died. She lived in she Iowa. Did. Lost a lot of the family. Who all have you lost? Have you lost children? Just no. one, Virginia. Okay. Uh, one. The oldest one. Lost her. Lost my sister and my brother, big brother. And there's been several deaths. My family, my mother and father. Yeah, I said there's been several. Somehow you've managed to make it through all that, haven't you? Well, I guess. Man. You just had to because you're still here, huh? Yeah, at my age. Yeah. What type of things do you enjoy still today? Reading the newspapers. That's why I bring up newspapers every week. That's good. So if you had your grandchildren or great-grandchildren who came on our website and listened to this interview, what would you want to tell them? Help them see me. No. Yeah, tell them to come see me. Yeah. Yeah. What would you want them to know about your life? Well, I've been taken care of. And that I've met people that I didn't know before. Mm -hmm. After Ryan in particular, I met him when I first moved up here because I had fell and got my arm all messed up. And I've had him for my daughter ever since. So he's taking good care of you, huh? I think. Well, good. Now, have you driven a car before? Did you used to drive? Oh, yeah. Because I bet you drove a tractor and... Not the tractor too much. No? I did that. Okay. So I started when I was kids about five that. years old. Wow. No, I, know. I had to drive them, but I didn't, I didn't go to the field. My mother did. Really? She went to the field. They yeah, used a horse and uh, horses, didn't they? Huh? Didn't Grandma and Grandpa use horses in the field? Oh, yeah. yeah I remember that days. They used horses instead of before they got the uh, tractors. So you've done a lot of hard labor type stuff, haven't you? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. mm, 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 mm. But did you mind it? I mean... Back in the day, when I think about it, people worked hard because they had to, to make a living. I tell you, the kids of today, what they need to do, that shooting, the kids need to stay home instead of so they're out running around. The mothers need to stay home and nurse the babies. Gotcha. They're out too much, I think. Out running and yes. if they had a farm to tend or a garden to tend, they wouldn't be out running, huh? Yeah. They wouldn't yeah. be in trouble. <laughs> there you go. They'd be tired at the end of the day. My kids come home mm -hmm. from school and uh, had school activities that they went to and didn't go out to the park and do this or whatever they're doing today, did they? Well, that's good. I mean... This girl mm -hmm. walked home. Yes, I walked home from school activity one night. She came... The bus 
You never know when the lust is going to be in. Oh. And she said, uh, people wouldn't telephone me and have me come to get them. She was going to go home from going to the ball game. And she walked eight miles. Eight miles? Mm -hmm. My, my feet was, uh, I had tennis shoes on, and my feet were so blistered and sore from walking. You should have just went into somebody's house. But, uh, there was a the bus, but that happened when I was about I got up many nights at 11, 12 o'clock and go to the schoolhouse to pick up the kids that they got home from the wall. So it sounds like not only did you run a household at home, but you also, your children were able to do activities related to school. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So you, you just didn't take a break. No, I was on call. <laughs> <laughs> on call, I would agree. Well, at that time, Mom, we didn't have a phone. I don't think we had a phone at the time that I had to walk home, did we? Yes, I did. Did we? I don't know. Yes, wouldn't call. Huh? Whoever it was wouldn't call. Wouldn't oh, call. That, that's because right. I, I had I walked up. Had, they they wouldn't let me back in the schoolhouse to call my mom. And I walked home. They got yeah, trouble over there. Get up. And I get up in the morning at five o'clock and go pick blackberries. Oh my. <laughs> now, how did you deal with the chigger bites and mosquitoes? Well, still in bed. Huh? The kids were still in bed. Right. And I leave to go to pick blackberries and get back about the same time they get up. Did you get mosquito bites and chiggers and not bad, huh? Really? That's wonderful. So were the blackberries on your property or? No. I had to go all oh, about three miles to the place where they had the blackberries and then picked blackberries. Did you have to buy them or did No, they're just neighbors. Good. And then the next yeah, people come along the road. Pick. Okay, wonderful. So you just kept going down the road and you'd find another bush and yeah. or go to your neighbors and collect them, huh? Yeah. Was that, there... There was other women there. Mrs. Eads was there. Mrs. Jack Lee. Mrs. Lee, she was there. And the different people that wanted blackberries would come in and pick. Was there one time period that was harder than all the other years that you lived? Well, when Dad got hurt, when we lived in Maryville, when we lived in Maryville and Dad got hurt on that tractor accident, and I got sick, and Grandma come down and got me, took me back home. And you was pregnant with Nova. That was the fifth yeah. child. And Dad, Dad was in the hospital, uh, in St. Francis Hospital in Maryville, and he had gotten uh, a buzz saw that uh, trims uh, stumps. Okay. And, and it came loose, and, it, and when he turned around off the tractor, look, it caught him up through his hair and down through his shoulder, and he drug himself to neighbors, and they took him to the hospital. He was in a coma. He almost died. My mom was pregnant with the fifth child, and my grandparents came down to check on us, and, and uh, I was sick. I had uh, rheumatic fever, and they, they, I almost died, and then I went back home and stayed with Grandma and Grandpa while Mom had to stay in the hospital with uh, my dad, and he was in a coma. And when he came to, uh, he tried to swallow his tongue, and there was nun, nun, nuns, uh, nuns there at the hospital. And Mom hollered at one of them, and they reached down and pulled his tongue back out so he could sw uh, well, I breathe. I'll tell you about when I was in high school. Okay. Me and my brother 
were horseback oh, yeah. to high school, eight miles, and in the wintertime when it was cold, a lot of times we would get off and walk for half a mile. Uh, we would get about halfway there before it got cold. The yeah. It was cold. These other kids were riding off back too. Whew. And, uh, but uh, we were, <laughs> I told Dr. Wyatt about this. And he laughed and he thought that was funny that uh, we were work back to high school. Well? And, uh, but I changed after the second year in Skidmore to Maitland because Maitland went on the bus. Oh? So I changed and went to Maitland High School and graduated from there. But my older brother stayed on with Skidmore because he graduated from Okay, okay. Well, that sounds like a lot of the history you're speaking of is very, you had to work hard to do anything. You had to, you know, did you ride the horse bareback to school? We had a saddle. Okay, so you had a saddle, but you uh, still had to put that on after you yeah. caught the horse. And yeah, I could put on the saddle. I could uh, put on the horse on the horse. And I told Dr. Ryan about that. You know. He thought that was funny that he even mentioned that she said she rode horseback eight miles. Oh. There wasn't anything to laugh about. No, I'll bet not, especially when it was chilly. Yeah. It was chilly. Yeah. Was there anything else you'd like to tell us about your life? You're 101. <laughs> You've had eight children. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be 102 in a month. 102 in a month. Yeah. Well, bless you. I want to live that long. Mm -hmm. I told Dr. Ryan, and I don't know if you know it or not, but me and Dr. Ryan are very close. I am. I love him to death. He knows it. But, uh, My life was something different than his. I don't know where he went to school at or anything, but he thought it was funny. It might have been funny to him. To ride the, 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 the horse to school how, eight miles. How would you feel about it? <laughs> One night, I threw the run to school. Dr. Ryan thinks I was listening to some boy, but I wasn't. I, I don't remember what I was doing, but anyway, I was late. We kept our horses at a stockyard in Skidmore. Okay. And uh, I went down to get the horses, and I, I waited around there, and my brother wasn't there. I thought maybe he'd wait for me. So I was late getting started by the horse. It was starting to get dusk or dark when I left Skidmore. And by the time I got home, it was dark. But you know, our place had a yard fence. And you had to open a gate to get in into where the house was. And when you opened the gate, you could hear it. Oh. And my dad, Heard me open the gate, and he came out. They was eating supper when I got home. He came out and got my horse and took it down to the barn. That my my dad was very good to me. He spoiled me. Mm, yeah, he did. <laughs> <laughs> if it hadn't have been for him, I don't know how what we would have done. But one time when we moved from uh, Iowa down there, we didn't have another vehicle to drive. And Mom couldn't uh, take go any place, and and Dad was working away from home. He got a job where he had to leave, and and we didn't have no transportation. And well, Grandpa could, brought I down a car, do an, old, an old Studebaker, do uh, with the suicide doors on it. Oh. I'll never forget it. It was a kind of a uh, uh, an aqua color. And it was an old Studebaker, about 1949 or whatever. I don't remember exactly the year what. 
but we just love that old car. Oh. No. <laughs> but he brought that down from mom to take us kids to the doctor and to town and get mm. groceries while dad was working away from home. If it hadn't been for grandpa, we wouldn't, I don't know what we would have done. That's when family really took mm -hmm. good yeah. care of yeah. family. Yeah. But I remember that old Studebaker. I, I don't think I was about four or five years old, maybe older than that, but I I can remember that old car. Remember, mm. the, remember that old Studebaker that Grandpa brought down for us? When, yeah. Remember that old Studebaker that Grandpa brought down for us? It had uh, the aqua colored one. You probably don't remember it, but I can remember it. But uh, we, my Dad had gotten a job. He got a job working, working away from home, and we had no way to go anywhere. We didn't know any of the neighbors or nothing down there at the time. And, hmm. and me and my mother, John, were the only two left out of the class that I was in. Wow. <laughs> Junior. And he wants to, he lives in the morning our way. See? I've got a letter from him. He was a he one of our classmates. He come up there and live with him. Is Junior the only one left in in your class? Me and Junior is the only two left. You, you and Junior are the only one? And I think Dr. Ryan thinks I'm engaged to Junior. Oh! <laughs> that was Grandma's that ring. Oh! Well, that's nice. Yeah. Well, how about we do this? How about I'll end these recordings and we can visit a little bit more. Does yeah. that sound good to shut shut this tape recorder off and we visit some more? Uh, yeah, say more, yeah. You want to talk to her a little bit more? Okay. Okay, well, I'll shut this off and, uh, you know, try to keep them a certain length. Because if they go on forever, people might not listen as much or, you know, whatever. But we'll conclude this interview with Florence Turner and her daughter, Mary. Mary, Mary Rossman. Mary Rossman. Thank you both.